I'm going to put a mask on this child here. I'm going to kind of make a little bit more exacting than I've done with the other one. I'm going to actually click several times here around them like so. so. I could have turned on Roto Bezier to make this smoother, but we're just doing that for the time being. And I'm going to soften the edge anyway, so it won't be so obvious that it's a, kind of an odd looking thing. My bad. Uh, with the mask selected, that's important. I didn't do it last time. With the mask active like this, that's what I wanted to do. When you go to the tracker, there's going to be this little option right here, which is called the Rigid Mask Tracker. Don't know why I forgot that, but here we go. And let's see here. So with that mask selected, so sorry I didn't do it last time, the only option here will be to do a Rigid Mask Tracking, as it's called. And you can choose various ways to track the mask. I want to do position, scale, and rotation. It would work better if it was just position and scale, but uh, there's no option for position and scale only. So I've got position, scale, and rotation. And now if I go click this going forward, it'll track that young man pretty slowly. But what's going to happen is that this thing will tilt as the boy tilts his bike. And as he comes toward me, it, the, the mask will expand. It won't, the points won't change their relative positioning, but the mask will get bigger as the child comes toward us because, you know, he's getting closer to the camera. And gradually you're going to be making a whole bunch of keyframes here, and it'll be within the mask, which is what went wrong last time. I'm going to stop here because it's going to take a long time to do the whole thing. Now if you open this up, the keyframes are in the mask, which is what I was trying to do last time when I blew it, so sorry about that. You need to do a rigid mask tracker when you're doing this. That's the cool thing. So now we followed him for that little distance anyways, so you can see the way this works. And now I want to apply some effects, not to him, but to everybody else. So I can go to masks here, and instead of having it be an add, I can make it be a, a subtract, or I can click invert it. Either one works. They both work the same way. So now we're protecting everything in the scene but the child, which seems terrible, but we're going to fix this in a second. What I want to do is go get, let's say, a blur. So we'll get another Gaussian blur. Why not? Drag it down to the layer. I'm going to blur all these things in the background. So I go to Repeat Edge Pixels, and we'll blur everything like that, which, you know, would be sufficient, I think, but let's also darken it a bit. So I'm going to go get Curves, and I'll apply Curves to this as well. Just drag it over to the video clip. I can pull things down in the middle and just make things darker. That will be sufficient for our purposes. All right, and now what I could do now is I could take, uh, I could mask the boy, and I would have put him in a layer above everything, and then I would have put all these effects, the curves and the blur, on the layer below it so that the boy stayed sharp and the second layer below was blurred and that kind of stuff. But here I can do it within one layer. And the way I do that is by going to effects down here, not up here, but down here. This is where the compositing options will be. Go to them one at a time, compositing options, click on the plus to add the mask automatically applied it to the boy, but it's still dark, right? That's because the other one is not applied to him yet. So I'll go down here, compositing options for the curves. And now you see that the boy is bright and sunny and everybody else is dark. And I can go back and go to the mask and we can soften the edges a bit. We can feather it so it's not so harsh around the edges. So that, so my drawing is not going to be obviously there. I can expand the mask a little bit so it covers a little bit more of him. And now it'll follow him. I'll turn off the mask visibility by clicking right there. And now the mask will follow him, like so. Thank you for watching this video. My name is Jeff Sangstack, an Adobe Certified Expert and the Lead Instructor here at BlueEffects.net. If you want to watch this entire video lesson, as well as other live classes and After Effects crash courses, then I invite you to check out the Blue Effects After Effects Academy. Just click the link below this video to find out what we've prepared for you in the After Effects Academy.